Stand firm in the faith. This is the topic we are looking at this particular day. And we continue by looking at the story of Perpetua, a few other parts, and also reflect on the scripture, Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 36, where we still hear Jesus calling us to pay a high price for following him. Stand firm in the faith. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, may your word impart our hearts. May your word bear much fruit in our lives. May your word draw us to yourself because we need to be brought up and fed and nourished by this which is the bread of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 36. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet for faith their soul. That's, that, that's part of Jesus' speech when he has just rebuked St. Peter and told him, Get behind me, Satan. Jesus predicted his suffering and death on the cross, and when he told the disciples, Peter did not want to take it in. He did not want to stomach that bad news, that bad predicament. And so he started rebuking Jesus and said, No, Jesus, that won't happen to you. It will never happen to you. And Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. And thereafter, he will paint the fact that they need to go through suffering sometimes. And whoever wants to be a true disciple must deny themselves and carry their cross and follow Jesus Christ. This seems to be what we read in the story of Perpetua. We have told part of it in another video, and in this one, I'll continue just to describe his, her time in prison and finally her execution. This is 203 AD. Perpetua was baptized just before being taken to prison with four other disciples. At the time of her baptism, she was told to pray for nothing but endurance in the face of her trials. In the crowded and very uncomfortable prison, her most excruciating pain came from being separated from her baby, her baby boy. When she received permission for her baby to stay with her, she recalled, my prison suddenly became a palace for me. Prompted by her brother who knew her gifts, Perpetua prayed to God and received a dream of a golden ladder of the highest length, reaching up to the heavens. On the sides of the ladder were swords, lances, hooks, and daggers, so that if anyone did not climb looking up on heaven, they would be severely injured. At the bottom of the ladder laid a large dragon to try to scare those journeying up away from heaven. Perpetua first saw Saturus go up. Now, Saturus was their instructor when they were doing the catechism, when they were being taught the Christian faith before baptism. This Saturus was their teacher. And Perpetua saw Saturus go up first. After he reached the top of the ladder, he said, Perpetua, I wait for you, but take care that the dragon does not bite you. To, thee, to which she replied, In the name of Jesus, he will not hurt me. And the dragon put in his head down. Ah! Perpetua traveled up the ladder and saw a beautiful vast garden with a tall man with white hair dressed like a shepherd and milking sheep. Thou art welcome, my child, he said to Perpetua. 
giving her some of the curds from the milk. She ate and all those around her said, Amen. Perpetua woke up from her dream with sweet, a sweet taste still in her mouth. At once, she told her brother what happened and together they understood that they must suffer. The day before the games, the games were that time when these prisoners are released into the arena with wild beasts to, to fight with them and perhaps some of the beasts would kill these people. The day before those games, the day before the execution, these people were brought to a feast. These prisoners, including Perpetua, were brought to a feast that was organized so that the crowd could see the would-be matters and make fun of them. But these would-be matters turned this all around by laughing at the crowd for not being Christians and exhorting them to follow their example. These prisoners, including Perpetua and their teacher, were sent to the arena and they went there with joy and calm. The men were attacked by bears, leopards, and by wild boars. The women were stripped to face rabid, a rabid heifer. The two, that is Perpetua and, uh, and the other female prisoner who was called Felicity, were thrown out and attacked, but the crowd cried out they had had enough. The women were removed and clothed again. Perpetua called out to her brother and other Christians, Stand fast in the faith and love one another. Do not let our sufferings be a stumbling block to you. Perpetua and Felicity stood side by side and were killed by sword at Carthage in the Roman province of Africa. Friends, that is testimony of somebody standing firm in faith. And that is the subject we are looking at. Stand firm in the faith, in the face of a cross, in the face of suffering, in the face of persecution, in the face of insults, in the face of being hated by family. Stand firm in the faith. And this is what the Amplified Bible will say for those verses that we read earlier, Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 36, Jesus called out the crowd together with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. And follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example and living, and, if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake and the gospel's will save it from the consequences of sin and separation from God. For what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world with all its pleasures and forfeit his soul? Jesus' invitation is very clear. And it's not an invitation just to suffer. It's an invitation to a greater good, a life in eternity that will only be attained if you are willing to endure some of the suffering that may be on the journey here on earth. And I pray that you will stand firm. There are many other examples. Perpetua is just one of them. You stand firm as well and stand firm in the faith. God our Heavenly Father, may you give us the grace to stand firm in the faith. Thank you for the examples of those who inspire us, who have gone before us. Now I pray that you will give us the grace to stand firm and be united in the wonderful fellowship in life eternal when we meet you face to face. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.